Well, we've moved away from uh, the coast we introduced you to, uh, Trellis Bean itself, and we've moved back up uh, onto the land area to the margin of a big uh, freshwater reed swamp in the present day, uh, which is just below us here. Uh, and the tsunami wave, we think, uh, came out through this location where we're standing. And as it uh, carried across into the reed swamp uh, and eroded that reed swamp away, then it deposited uh, behind it here uh, sands which had brought up from uh, the beach environment uh, and the offshore zone and deposited those sands in this location. And we can see um, the sands in the present day uh, quite clearly and we'll look at that a little bit later. But the reason we found this site at all is not due to um, coastal science as it were, but it's from the local uh, landowner, uh, Richard Henderson, who's here, who um, was interested in the site here, which is essentially uh, part of his land. So Richard, how did you find the site? Well, I found the site because I thought it was the most beautiful place in the world, which it is. You access it across the Phragmites reed swamp there, which is a, a magical thing in itself. Mm. And then this bit of this field, I don't have all three fields, but we have this one, uh, was completely covered with hawthorn and whitethorn scrub and sort of natural woodland, so I didn't want to disturb it. But eventually, in creating some small sheltered gardens using the original plants, uh, I discovered with the aid of a digger that the sand, I always knew there were three sandy fields and this was one of them. Uh, that's folklore and naming, but when we dug this field with a proper JCB, I found the sand is almost two meters deep. And once you go underneath the surface sand, uh, which is colored with a bit of humus, uh, it's absolutely virgin, pure, pure white sand. And that I thought, gosh, that's an amazing find anyway. Mm. But then I looked at the sand more closely and I noticed that it had quite a lot of entire or partially broken uh, marine shells in. So it was clearly marine sand and not um, glaciated. And we have some examples of those just yes, there on the rock. There. And um, so then I thought maybe you would expect those things to, be, to have to have been, been crushed, but they, many of them were intact. So I wondered whether they were sort of swept here. And then further up there, when I was also building some terraces for the garden, uh, I found um, some enormous submerged rocks uh, actually in the sand, with sand below them and sand above them. So I thought to myself, well, how did the sand, uh, how did the rocks get there? And how did the sand get there? Almost 20 meters above sea level. And I was getting more and more suspicious that something had happened of a fairly catastrophic nature uh, quite a long time ago. But not that long, but some time ago, because there were also land, uh, land snail shells and things also mixed into the sand, perhaps signs of the vegetation or, or wind blowing. Anyway, all these things I, made, made me extremely interested. And I happened to be sitting opposite Robert at a wedding. And I said, you don't happen to know anybody who's interested in coastal sedimentation in West Cork, do you? And he said, I'm your man. It was a pure coincidence. I've, for many years wanted somebody to come and have a look at these sands. And so I suppose those things really, the, the presence of these big raftable rocks, uh, which are sort of wider and also they seem to be from mar marine origin with sort of softened edges, not the ones that have sheared off the vertical depositions uh, here. And the presence of these entire shells, uh, plus the depth of the sand, I, I thought this was a very, very interesting place to look at and at the altitude of the sand above sea level made me think it couldn't have been all happened by wind. And if it had to happen by wind, how on earth do you blow a two-ton flat rock into the middle of the sand? So something must have happened. And so Robert's been investigating it uh, with his grad student, Abigail Cronin, and um, that's where we are now. Exactly. Hmm.